experts say Sauls has the right attitude. In this job market, women over 50 are increasingly going to have to create their own opportunities. Now, for more on how older workers, especially women, are faring in the U.S. jobs market, we're joined by Teresa Gilarducci. She's director of the Schwartz Center for Economic Policy and Analysis. Teresa, thanks for joining us. Sure. So we just had the jobs report come out yeah. today. What did it tell us about women and unemployment? Uh, well, you just reported that the rate went down for everybody, but for uh, women of all age categories, it went up a little bit. But the biggest increase were for women over um, age 50. Okay. So the overall rate is up, and as you said, um, women's share of long-term unemployment is now higher than it's ever been. Higher, o older women's Higher than share. it's ever been. And it's how, ever how been. do you explain that? I mean, there's, there, nobody right. can really pinpoint what's going on. They say that it's kind of obvious that there is some sort of discrimination happening, but we don't know what's the underlying reason for that. What is your theory? Um, well, the labor market, as you pointed out, is not as tight or as robust as it is. So people who are on the bottom, e bottom end of the hierarchy always suffer a little bit more, and they're Old people are, so older men and older women have a harder time in the job market. And since women are subordinated to men, then the combination of women and, and being old, and it could be because employers devalue the work and the skills that women, older women bring to the labor market. They may view the skills that older women bring to depreciate faster than for men. It could be that um, good-looking people actually get hired faster than people who aren't viewed as attractive. Mm -hmm. And because we live in a sexist society, being older mm -hmm. for a woman is not viewed as attractive. It doesn't wear as well as it does for men. So it's a combination of ageism and sexism, really. Uh, that's think? right. It's called intersectionality. It's mm -hmm. the combination of the two things that sort of doubly, even more than doubly, hurt you. Now, given that you say women disproportionately are impacted by this, um, does this also hurt women more in the sense, are, are women more vulnerable in that, yeah. what is their financial situation right. compared to men when they're over right. 50? And so um, older women can't really afford to be discriminated against in the labor market. Um, their wealth balances, if you look at their total wealth, and mainly that's in the retirement accounts, or even their housing wealth, if they're living separate, is much lower than men's. So if you look at a 401k balance for a man and a woman over 50, women have about 60% of what men have. And is that because they're paid less, or is it because some of them take time off to take care of children or parents? I mean, the burden of caretaking tends to fall more yeah, on women they, than men. So is that partially at play? The answer is yes. It's both things. So since um, we have a gender division of labor in the household and in the market that's not equal, Women do a lot of work that's not paid for, and if you don't get paid for work, you actually don't contribute to your pension. So the lifelong accumulation of doing all that unpaid work adds up. And even if they work, though, alongside men that whole time, since starting at 20, they would have less in their retirement accounts because they um, earn, earn less. less. And also, because women actually live longer, have to be a little more careful with their money, they actually invest less aggressively. So the rate of return is lower, the amount of money they put in, in the account is lower, and the time they put in their account is smaller. For okay, so, so let's, let's try to flip it to the positive and, and talk about what kinds of jobs yeah. are available to okay. men and women over 50, and do they have to accept lower wages yeah. as part of the package? Yeah, so this is really good news. First of all, older women in America do a lot better than older women in other countries. There is, on paper, and also in society, a strong belief by everybody that women and men should be treated the same. That matters a lot. Also, when the recovery actually gets even stronger, um, you'll see a lot of employment in areas where women are, um, tend to go. Education and health care are women-friendly um, um, occupations. Um, women need to be very smart about selling themselves, especially if they've had gaps in their employment, and talk about the skills they develop while they might have been staying home and taking care of their children or the house. Organizational skills, um, accounting skills, there are lots of skills that people have, even if it wasn't paid for. Okay, and lastly, because we're, we're slowly running out of time, um, what would you say, from a policy perspective, can be done to increase the odds of people over 50 finding work? Um, Oh, policy? Oh, a really good one is that employers be um, um, 
employers get subsidized for um, covering women's health care. So we can make Medicare age um, down to 50 or actually make, um, make Medicare um, pay for the health care of older workers. Because that's a big disincentive for employers is the high cost of health care when, when, right. when hiring seniors, right? That's right. Or not seniors, older. Uh, older. Mature, <laughs> 50 mature. plus, mature. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. That's all we have time for. Uh, that was uh, Teresa Gillarducci, the director of the Schwartz Center for Economic Policy Analysis.